Hello, everyone. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, welcome to Practical Creativity, which is what we're calling this. So the program, uh, an experiment where we demystify the creative process so you can make it your own. Today, we're going to talk with Ka Catherine Mikesell of Fountainhead, the foundress and extraordinary visionary about um, the programs that she's doing. And there's so much that she is doing right now for artists and providing resources, being a collecting spot. They're exploring new technology. Catherine, tell us a little bit more about you and what the Fountainhead is all about. Oh, okay. Um, well, the Fountainhead, I mean, the Fountainhead started um, because Dan and I, you know, we started collecting over 20 years ago. And, you know, we started collecting because we were looking for something outside of the world of technology where we were both working um, to bring us together and that we could learn and, um, and grow with, you know, together. And also while we were, you know, while we were apart and we became, we went all in, we became very passionate about collecting artists, but very quickly we realized that it was, it was really the artists who we were collecting um, more so than the work. And, um, so, you know, as, um, so we just, as we became more and more entrenched in the world of artists, um, we wanted to do more to, to give back. So we started the residency, the home across the street from ours became available and I said, wouldn't that be a great place to run a residency? And um, yeah. thankfully my husband was like, yeah, that, that's not a bad idea. And, um, and, and so th that was the start of the residency. And, and really we, you know, we were, um, we were trying to, we were trying to do two things with it as we, as we, you know, really solidified what it was that we wanted to do. Um, it was, we, we, we said, we want, we know we want to support artists and get back to artists. And we learned about other residencies out there, but then we also said, well, what, what more can we do to also support our community? Because, you know, Miami was growing um, by leaps and bounds and continues to, and this was back in 2008. And, you know, before Pam was, you know, when Pam was, you know, ma'am, and when the ICA didn't exist and, you know, when Bass was smaller and, and, and all those things. So, um, you know, when we first started, we, um, we went to uh, Locust Projects, who at the time, um, their um, executive director was Claire Bruckel, who was a dear friend of ours. And the artists were living in the back warehouse in, the, in a bedroom in the warehouse in, you know, Wynwood before Wynwood was Wynwood. I mean, yeah, before it, it is what it is today. And we said, you know, what if we start by hosting all of your artists? And they said, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we did that for, I think, close to seven years. We, we hosted all of Locust Projects artists. And at the same time, we went to the museums and we talked to the museums and they said, that would be great because, you know, it just saved, it, it not only saved them money, right? Because they didn't have to pay for hotels, but it also meant that the artists could stay here and engage with the community more. Mm. Um, so that's really where the residency started. And really it was just three months after that, that we started the Fountainhead Studios mm -hmm. because we were collecting a lot of Miami-based artists, many Miami-based artists were our dearest friends. So we had a focus group and said, what, what do you need? What, what is your greatest need? And um, everybody said, studio space. And I said, okay, well, I don't have a building, but I have friends that have buildings. And, um, and a friend of yeah. ours, Steve Rhodes, had a building in Little Haiti. Again, Little Haiti before it's now the Little Haiti that's talked about in the New York Times and everything. Um, again, you know, 2008. And um, he had a building that he was having trouble renting and we put tape on the floors and started to invite artists to rent spaces. And now we have, you know, we expanded five times. We took over an enti the entire warehouse and then two adjoining warehouses. And um, that space was really, you know, the studios is about, um, we didn't want to, we didn't want to curate the artists in, in a way that was like, we'll, we'll choose artists and then give them a short term, you know, stay and then, and then, you know, keep, keep going with that. We really wanted it. We really wanted to build a community there and to give artists the comfort level that they knew that they would have a studio from this point forward until it was, until they decided they were ready to go. Um, and, but at the same time, it was super flexible. Um, and that artist, um, the, the leases are only month to month. So if they have an opportunity that arises and they want, they need, they want to leave for three months, then they just hand over the keys and say, you know, thank you, I'm out. 
um, or they can sublease it with the only the only criteria being that you can't um, you can't make money off other artists. You have uh-huh. to lease it for what you're what you're paying. Um, and it really has built, you know, we focused on bringing artists that were that were actually in, in all our programs, you know, working with artists that are just good people. You know what I mean? That that in that yeah. space in particular would be a part of a community and that would share their ideas and their time and their thoughts and and you know looking for you know a, a broad range of artists been in, 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 from all aspects of age and you know levels of success or uh, materials in which they work so they could feed off one another you know yeah. um and I'm then a, since a then mm-hmm. yeah and then um and then since then you know fast forward um, until last year, when we received a um, another grant from the Knight Foundation, we started Artists Open, and that was kind of another dream of mine um, because I realized that you know, being in the art world, I knew where to find artists, Miami-based artists. But people would always ask me, like, how, if I wanted to buy Miami-based artists, where would I? How would I do that? Like, where would I go? And, um, you know, I could tell them, you know, you can come to Fountainhead Studios for the two times that we open during the year and you can go to Oolite and you can go to Bake House. And now there's others like Laundromat and Mana and, you know, um, there's many. Um, but still, it's not like it's it was an easy thing, you know. Um, so we started um, with this grant, we started Artists Open. And last year it was I was just thrilled with the success. We had over 300 artists in the end open their studios and we pulled together all of the major complexes. So all of the, well, actually all of any complex that we learned about, um, we included. And, um, and then we also included um, artists that worked, any artists working in non-residential spaces of which there are many clusters kind of all over Miami-Dade County. So we had, um, artists in, in the northernmost part of the county, Bridge Red Studios, and then there are a bunch of other artist studios there that will be opening this year when we do it again, um, you know, out to Doral and Hialeah and all the way south to the Deering Estate and Pockets in the Grove and the Gables and, and Calle Ocho and Wynwood and downtown. It, it, um, and, you know, it's such a, like, I, I, I'm, so looking forward to that again because it's just such a beautiful thing to see people that that don't always get to go into artist studios to like see the magic behind um the artist lair and be able to see their materials and how they're working and what they're working on and the kind of that you know the history of their practice through the works that they have and what they have up you know next to their computers or their stations for inspiration mm-hmm. um it's just yeah, it's amazing. And, so and I, the I music they listen to. When I was at the Bakehouse, yeah. I was, I was, it, it was kind of fun to to pop in every once in a while, like spend a good amount of time with people to see what's inspiring them. But it was always like, who's listening to what? And yeah. and also, you know, even going back, um, you know, a couple years later, seeing how people's practices have shifted based Absolutely. on you know, which is normal. And this is why you have a studio so that you can evolve your practice. Um, so you, you bring up a good point, which is artist studios are where the magic happens. So, so often, like I have two Miami artists here, actually former Bakehouse artist Ernesto Kunde hey. and Lauren Schwartzbaugh um, here. So I, I bought these pieces at the Bakehouse, very Thank I'm you. Miami artist here in my apartment. <laughs> Um, but one of the things that you see is you, you always are seeing the final pro- product. Like when you go to a museum, when you go to an art fair, um, even when you go to an exhibition, even if it's a local artist, you're not necessarily seeing the process as it, as it unfolds. And that's such a magic thing because it's like visual artists are solo people. It's not like musicians where you spend a little time alone and then you get together and you rehearse and it's really a collaborative process, but yet some artists are very collaborative. So you can, can you tell us a little more about what that studio experience is like, maybe for the folks who haven't actually been in an artist studio, what would they expect? And and what is that like? There's some sort of exchange or you just watch the artist, like tell us more, bring some color to that. <laughs> okay, well, no, I, well, I would say, I wanna begin by saying if, if the artist studio is is amazing, but I wanna start by saying it's the artists. Yes. <laughs> right, it's like, that's what I have to tell you, um, in this incredibly dark time that we're in, um, people are realizing, I think, 
the value of the artists, the people behind the work um, in a way that they haven't actually really had the opportunity to in the past. Totally. Um, like you said, you know, whether it's museums or galleries or fairs or, you know, pop-up exhibitions, they're incredible. Like I, I, I they, we need them, right? But the opportunity to get close to the artist generally just isn't there, right? I mean, you just don't have that opportunity because if it's at an opening, you know, you might see them, you might wave to them, but they, they have to interact with, you know, hopefully hundreds of people there, right? People to, want to buy uh, art. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. We want, we, want us, we want them to sell, 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 but we don't really get the chance to meet them, right? So, um, and, and, and every artist is their work right? The art, the art comes from, from everything inside of them, their, their past, their present, their thoughts, their demons, how they view the world, like that is where their art comes from. So being able to meet the artist and then being able to do it in their studio, oh my gosh, it's like, it's such an incredible, um, I think often emotional experience. I mean, just seeing the just seeing the world through an artist's eyes is so, something for those of us like I'm. I'm not an artist in any way. Um, it's just it just opens my mind in in so many different ways and opens my heart and just causes me to think in ways that I I wouldn't without these experiences with artists. So, you know, when you walk inside an artist studio, I, I mean, the thing I love just to peer around because you can see like, you know, I'm a very like organized person, right? Like everything has its place. You can ask me where something is in, a ca in my cabinet in the kitchen. I can tell you exactly where it is, you know? <laughs> um, my husband's exactly the opposite. You know, he's like, he is, or he is organized chaos. So I love <laughs> seeing, I love seeing um, the artist studios to see if the work that they make is like, if the, the environment in which they make it in is like that if I mean obviously there's something to that, but you'd be shocked at I, I'll never forget one of the first artists that we had in the residency was an artist W. Tucker who made these very very naive childlike drawings to the point where we commissioned him to do one on our wall and um, just a small one and at that point we had um, we had a nanny because our children were young and I came out and she was she was spraying it to clean because she thought one of the kids had made it. And I was like, no, oh my gosh, no, <laughs> stop. But he was an artist that he could nearly work with his eyes closed. He mm -hmm. actually sat on his knees. He made a special like cushion out of foam, sat on his knees, put all of his writing tools and drawing tools around him on a, um, on the floor on a piece of canvas and then would just like grab one so like it's like this very naive loose work yet mm. so meticulously organized that he literally could could almost do it with his eyes closed Amazing. so i love seeing and, and sometimes they're completely aligned right like like Farley Aguilar, who's a Miami-based artist, you know, his work is just like, you know, loose and fantastic and guttural and, and, and his studio is the same way. There's like paint everywhere and like, you know, on the floors all over him, you know? So his work and like his studio is, is, is a direct response to who, you know, who he is. And then there's like everything everything in between and it's like and then also you yeah. might go into a an artist studio whose work you know um as being you know one particular body of work maybe like you know photography or something and then all of a sudden you go in your stu in their studio and they're like sculptures everywhere and you're like what are what are those oh why mate they're just for me you know they're just you know it wasn't it's not something i want to really show and so you get to yeah. also see when you talk about process, like the, the things that artists have worked through that maybe don't mm -hmm. become, you know, works of art that they're going to present or exhibit. Um, 
um, you know, what they're what they what they put up on their walls for inspiration, whether it's artwork by other artists, it's it's poetry, it's you know images from magazines, it's you know scraps of 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 uh, you know material from their mother's dress, like you know anything and everything. Their pets, you know, that you you get to see inside their you know little a little piece inside their minds and in their hearts. I don't know if that's a good, good yeah, description. Yeah, but... for sure. It's kind of like going into a magic secret world you can't access otherwise. But I love what you were saying also because it, it brings up uh, something that I've kind of not maybe articulated, but I think the world, to me, the, the world of the artist, the brain and the way that artists see things is just so important because they, they help us confront and see things that either wouldn't get seen or that make us a little uncomfortable and we wouldn't, we would like avoid them if we went at them head on. But right. it's just this way of taking something that is such a truth and just presenting it in a way that like it, it gets us, it like activates us, it, it causes a, a reaction. And without artists, we could just kind of like edit our own, you know, lifestyles and our own ways of thinking, but artists like, force you to see things in a different way and that is so good and so healthy and to your point we need that especially when things are chaotic and we don't know what to make of things right i know i i, I have to tell you i i i actually believe I, I i hope that um that before i die which is a long time from now um that actually every company has a C level executive that is an artist, not in their not in their creative department, not in their marketing and advertising, but at the C level that just provides an artist perspective on everything that the company is doing, from mm -hmm. the products they're creating to how they're marketing them to their consumer engagement or business engagement. Like artists just see things differently. They they, you know. I think back and I can't remember, I can't remember what movie it was and I've seen other artists do um, images like this, but like, you know, a, a plastic bag dancing in the air, you know, the sound becomes a symphony and the, the visual becomes a movie. And it's like, I'm only thinking of trash when I see a plastic bag and I've got to pick it up and put it, you know, put it in the air, but they just, you know, like, but that's, that's, that's everything in the world that they, that they see, right? They just they just see things differently. And they and they and they have such a way of presenting them. And 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 every artist is different in how they present um, the thing the things that they're tackling with in their work. Some it's very upfront and very in your face and like, oh, I'm gonna grab you by the neck and you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna listen to me. And others are like, they just kind of whisper at you and they just, they like, they pull you in and all of a sudden you're like, ah, okay, you know, like, it, it and, and everything in between. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it, yeah. And, and, you know, and, and, and not, you know, and not, you know, and, and then there's also just the work that just is just beautiful and warms your heart and makes you smile. And, you know, it's something that you want to wake up to. There's just, and, and, and there's, there's, there's every emotion that you want to feel or need to feel as a human being can be brought about through art. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. People do these um, mood playlists on Spotify, but I, I would love to see like, um, kind of like a mood artwork kind of thing, because you're, you're totally right. And sometimes, you know, we, we need art to help us work through some dark things. We need art to help us feel things that are not all like feel good and happy. Right. Um, at least that's what I think for me. <laughs> yeah. um, tell me, Catherine, um, tell all of us, there are um, a lot of resources out there for artists right now. And certainly your whole mission all the way along <laughs> has been about helping artists and helping artists really means helping them get seen, helping give them support and resources, career opportunities, um, access to collectors, and then you know people who are going to buy their work. Tell us why it's important to buy local artwork 
and how people can start to get involved in doing that. Because certainly I never thought I could be a patron of the arts and like buy artwork directly from an artist at a price I could afford. But there's tons of amazing artists here in Miami who are creating totally awesome stuff that is yeah. totally affordable. So tell us more like, give us the case for that. Like tell us more how we could get involved in that. Well, and that's, and that, that right there is like, that's what I, you know, we've got to, I, I have to work harder and the rest of us in the art world have to work harder because there are many, you know, incredible people like yourself that are interested in art that, that, I mean, thankfully you, you, you know, you, you, you found ways and everything, but that are interested in art that, that don't feel comfortable within the art world because so much of it is, you know, is, is, you know, in the past, you know, has kept people at bay and, and kept people away from the artists, right? Again, the creators of the work, the ones that you want to meet and feel and know. Yes. And, and, and so, um, so it, it has been hard for people to, to support local because they just don't know where to begin. And it's also this like, this feeling, you know, the, the old, old adage, like if you, ha if you have to ask how much it is, you can't afford it, right? And that is like so wrong. And it, you know, and I was, I had to tell you, I was very excited, you know, when Art Basel Hong Kong, um, you know, was canceled and went online, they put prices on their work and they opened it up to the public. It had a VIP time, um, but then they opened it up to everyone and there were prices. Wow. And it was like one of these things, like, why did it take so long to put prices on work? And I under, like, I, I, I do get it, like I do, but I don't get it because I feel like it just, it puts, it pushes people away because they're afraid to ask, you know? So it'll be interesting. Dating. It'll be interesting to see how the art world changes and if that pricing will be will continue to be provided more upfront so people can kind of make their own decisions if they if they're able to take the next step in purchasing work right yeah. um, so like we like we have an initiative right now um, called um, hashtag artists so plural open online and that is um, something that we started in response to um, the current environment uh, and that's all works under a thousand dollars. So, and you can buy, you just, and you buy directly from the artist. There's no commissions taken by anybody. You mm -hmm. DM the artist or contact them. If you see something you, you like, or, you know, see something that attracts your attention and you, you want to know what other works are available, you can just reach out to the artist. So it's not just about the works that are posted on the site. It's like, okay, oh, you see something you like, you know, reach out to the artist. Mm -hmm. So um, initiatives like that. And then obviously during Artists Open, I highly encourage artists to clearly let people know what is available for sale and what the, what the prices are. But I do, um, you know, I do have, I, I always have lots of ideas and, and thoughts in my head, but I do want to do, I've been wanting to do a platform um, for Miami-based artists, um, you know, where, where we make it very easy and it's online and it's, you know, something like MiamiArtist.com, you know, like, I don't know, I think that one was taken because I've looked at it a few times, but um, <laughs> I do, I do want to, I, I am continuing to explore that and we'll see if I can come up with something soon. But, um, but until then, I'm going to continue doing the, the virtual studio visits, the, the live virtual studio visits, which we started also as a part of this, but something that will continue. Um, and they're done via, you know, they're done via Instagram live. They're, um, it's, you know, it's, it's 30 minutes. Yes, it's long, but you know, the other thing, I'm gonna get off on a tangent for one second. Please, tangent that, <laughs> that, that is, um, I love the raw content and like the human side of what is happening now. Yeah. Like, you know, when you can see, you know, talk show hosts in their PJs, in their, in their homes and, <laughs> And you know, and famous like rock stars sitting at their own piano with the kids running in the background, and they're like, you know, singing. And I mean, that is such. I mean, it, the reason why I didn't do anything before is because I we started to do these videos, and 
and Alex Nunez did a great job with these videos, but she worked hours and hours on editing them and making them perfect. And I, I, you know, and I was like, with this now, I'm like, gosh, there, they are, there's, there's different, you know, that, that still has a place. Right. But this raw, like unfiltered, mm -hmm. unscripted content that's happening out there really brings people into the world. Like it's no longer, the people are always, the people in certain, in certain um, roles are always going to be put on a pedestal, right? But that doesn't, but that doesn't mean they have to be unapproachable or unac inaccessible. Like mm -hmm. when you see these, these artists and you know, everyone that we're seeing online raw, it's, I think it's so much easier for people to aspire to that. Yeah. When they see that they're human beings, just like you. Right. You know I what I mean? I, I saw, totally. Like I saw a Instagram video of Oprah making spaghetti carbonara in her kitchen. And like she was. Yeah, I mean, she sounds amazing. Everything. It's like, it, it makes things less precious. And I think it makes it more transparent and more authentic. Absolutely. And there's just something more appealing about something, somebody who's approachable than this kind of like, veneer that's intimidating and it puts you at a distance because it is so perfect uh, what one of the things that keeps coming up as a theme in these conversations is I want to do this thing but I you know who am I to do that and I'm not perfect and I compare myself to this person they already have so much knowledge it yeah. kind of like that is very heavy burden to like not even start something that you're feeling called to because you feel like you have to be perfect at it even though you've never done it before of course you're not going to be perfect but you're going to learn Exactly. Right? It's like, I know it's like, I, and I think like this time is people are going, oh hell, I'm not going to wait anymore. I'm just going to put this out there and I'm going to see what people think. And as, as long as you're coming, as you're, as long as you're coming at it from a, like a genuine passion, yeah. people see that they're going to see that, you know, even if you're stumbling on your words or you're like, tripping over a cord as you're taking so it like none I, I just really think that none of that at least for the foreseeable future and, and hopefully for a very long time is going to matter like we all just have to we all just have to go for it we've got to try totally. you know what I mean because totally. a lot of times we're going to be surprised and and you know a lot of times we're going to have to take a right or a left or a complete u-turn and that's okay yeah for sure um and to your point, like this is the best time to do experiments. You know, that's also come up. Like, what's what's there to lose? To lose? Like, nobody knows what they're doing right now. Right. We're trying to pretend everything is normal that we're holding it together. But really, this is a time I think to let your imagination go and like the fear of failure. Like, what are the risks really right now? Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, it's it's um. My goodness, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's true. I mean, you just think about every everything is just so everyone is and everything is just so vulnerable right now, mm -hmm. and it's like so scary and so beautiful. Like, yeah. But I want I, I want to get back to buying Miami artists. Yes, I please. I, I just want to get because because I don't yeah. have that other like thing developed yet. Um, but, you know, that, I mean, the easiest, the, you know, the easiest way is, and also like, so, I mean, the easiest way is like complexes that have a lot of artists, right? So Fountainhead, Oolite, Bakehouse, Laundromat, Mana, Void, um, you know, the Deering Estate, I'm going to miss some, I know I'm going to, Bridge Red, like all, like, you know, those are all studio complexes that don't that aren't necessarily open to the public. Like we're not open to the public, right. um, but that but they all have websites with images of artists' works and things like that. So just like have some fun, like perusing artists' websites, and then search them on Instagram. Guaranteed, they're gonna have an Instagram page. And yeah. DM them like you never know. I, I would just say you know re reach out because I, I can tell you that artists can really really use use the support right now. And trust me, artists would much rather sell work that they have in their studios and put it to a put it inside a home that loves them and earn income that way, than writing grants and doing everything else. Right? I mean, so just if, if you know, and listen, if and if the artist has a gallery. 
great. They'll let you know. They'll provide you with the information to reach out to the gallery. You know, we want to keep the entire arts ecosystem going because we also have some extraordinary galleries, you know, right here in Miami too. Um, so, I, you know, I want everybody supporting Miami-based galleries as well um, and, and museums and other nonprofits like Please support my the whole ecosystem um, could use our love right now. That's yes, so exactly. If you have money, write checks um, <laughs> <laughs> to nonprofits and to artists. Um, but um, and just find your passion. You know, like whatever you're passionate about. If you haven't given yet, just you know, and 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 these days, any amount ha ha helps, right? Yeah. Like, you know, and and when it comes to artists, like. You know, maybe their work sell for, you know, maybe their primary canvases sell for $20,000, right? But I don't know, maybe they'll do a sketch for your budget. You know, you never know. Like, just ask because you're not, you're not, you're not going to insult an artist by being, by, by wanting to own their work. That's so true. Okay. Right. You can insult somebody if you see a piece of artwork and be like, I know it's $20,000, but can I get it for 10? Like, that's not this is not the time to do that. Okay. Yeah. Like don't, don't start negotiating uh, like now, just if, if you can afford it, just buy the work for what it's <laughs> worth. But, but like I said, but, but there may be other options. I love that because it goes back to kind of where you found it, where you started, which is founding Fountainhead was all about relationships and more than anything, once you start to get to know people, you know, you get to know artists and you're, if you're invested in them, them as people, them as creative producers, yeah. you're going to have a different kind of conversation. You're going to, you're going to be able to have, uh, well, once, once it's clear you're interested in each other, you know, you can really get to a place where there could be something special that they create for you on your budget. So, but you're not going to just walk away not knowing if you don't reach out and, and start that relationship. So getting to know the artists is number one, Absolutely. a great thing to do no matter what. And they'll tell you who they're interested in as well. Like this is a community. It's not like yeah. there's one artist and there's one, like everybody talks and everybody really is connected, especially in those complexes like you were talking about. Yeah, and, and trust me, even outside the complex, everybody, all artists have friends, right? Oh, and yeah. they're and, 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 and they're all willing to say, oh, and you have to check out this person. You have to check out this person. And then the other thing I should say, because I don't want to, I, I don't want to miss this too, is there are other ways to support artists. Like you don't just have to own their work, you know, yeah. there are <laughs> other, you know, there are, I mean, there are like artists that have Patreon accounts, like also just think about, you know, Hey, maybe you just want to support an artist practice. So you just give them a check or send them a Venmo. And then totally. I don't know. Then you could also, and, and, and maybe you get something from it and you invite them over for dinner and invite some of your friends over and then you can, and, and your friends can see how cool your artist friends are, you know, like <laughs> there are other ways to do it. Or maybe you have, maybe you, you know, don't, don't, you know, have the money to collect, or maybe you don't even want, like not everybody wants to collect artwork, but that doesn't mean that they don't want to support artists, right? The other thing is it's not, I don't, the world should not be just about the objects, especially when, especially when we're now in a time and place. And at least, I, I don't know, I, I say I, I'm becoming a, um, I'm, I'm becoming a millennial. I'm not going through a midlife crisis um, <laughs> because, you know, I am, I am less concerned with things, right? I just want, I just want, I just want more feelings, more connections, more people. I want to learn more like that's, you know, so, um, so, you know, so maybe it's just being a good person and inviting artists to dinner or, you know, like I said, just, you know, de depositing something in their Venmo or taking them shopping for materials or introducing them to your friends. Like, you know, think about, you know, think about other ways to support the artist or maybe helping them produce a book or I don't know there's you know but just start the conversation Love and that. see where it see where it leads oh so great um Catherine this has been such an amazing conversation sorry. half an hour flew by way fast oh, sorry. forever such a chatterbox this, this is great this is absolutely fantastic and absolutely what people want to hear about um 
Tell us just a little bit about the resources that you all have collected together. I know people have seen them in the New Tropic and other, other places. Where can artists go for help? If you know people who, who want to help artists, like where can you send them or where have you been sending them to help if they, if right. they don't know anybody yet? <laughs> Yeah, well, so there's a couple of things that I would say. One is, you know, we do have a resource page on uh, Fountainhead that we started like immediately. So it's uh, fountainheadresidency.com. And then the site is artist, uh, the webpage is artist resources. And I do update that daily. Um, you know, and, and on that, I, I list other organizations that are updating theirs daily because we all have different news sources. Um, yes. You know, there are um, uh, a couple places where you can like donate more money, like Oolites, um, Oolites Fund. People can donate to that fund and they're giving $500 grants to, um, to artists. Uh, the ICA just started a new one with three points. And they're giving fifty to three hundred dollar grants, but you can donate to that as well. Miami Foundation has a uh, has a um, a pool that you can donate to as well. United Way has a pool. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm sure there are more, but they're all on my they're all on our website. Um, the other thing I would say is that um, for artists out there, don't just think about programs that are for artists because there's tremendous resources provided by organizations like like United Way, um, and um, you know, that help. And also, I mean, it, I know it. Some people are like oh, food stamps, but I will tell you, food stamps is a great is is a phenomenal way to be able to take care of your food expenses. And if you're hurting, the, there is no shame in asking for help right now. So. I want everybody to think about things like that. Artists can apply for unemployment now, which they've never been able to do. Um, you know, and there's that extra six hundred dollars a week um, over and above what you would otherwise what you would otherwise get. So, I, you know, I would I would take advantage of that. Hopefully, those twelve hundred dollar checks are going to arrive to artists very soon or someday. I'm hoping. Um, but I would, I would just say, you know, and, um, I, and the, the, um, I know that FPL is lowering their, um, their electricity bills. So I would look and I would, I would reach out. I, it, I would reach out to everybody that you can and just take advantage of every resource that is out there. There is no reason not to. And I'm like, if artists come out of this with a bigger cushion, that would be amazing. Like, you know, like just, you know, I, it's, 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 you know, I, I realize it's a, it's a pain in the ass, right. Mm -hmm. To do all of these things, but a lot of them have been highly simplified. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would also don't just look at emergency type things, look at what's always available. So um, you have the Miami Dade County um, cultural affairs has lots of resources for, for um, artists, whether it's, you know, um, money to go for, um, you know, to go on residencies or professional development. They have the consortium. Um, they, they have, Miami-Dade County always has a host of, of resources available to artists. Then you have Art in Public Places that is constantly commissioning artists, thanks to the development happening in Miami, you know, constantly, mm -hmm. the, the, um, you know, having, um, you know, commissioning artists to do work. And I will say, I'm sorry, I know I'm going to go long because I need a few more minutes to tell more resources, but... Um, Bring it um, on, Catherine. <laughs> sorry, but with, with art in public places, you don't actually have to have done art in public places before. The team at, at Art in Public Places is phenomenal with engineers and it, they're amazing and they love working with, with artists that have never done this before because they know they're giving them a skill that they can use to build from and to do other, you know, to do other projects. So I would highly encourage people to um, apply to those and you don't have to, you don't, you, everybody says, but they, they need images of work. Yeah, send them paintings, it's okay. Like they just wanna see the work. It doesn't need to be work, you know, um, outside in public spaces. Um, okay, there's, there was other That's ones. Oh, Francie Bishop Good and David Horowitz are buying um, a work of art every week for between 500 and a thousand dollars. That's on Girls Club um, website. Um, oh my gosh, I know I'm gonna miss stuff. Um, 
there was uh, the Ellie's is coming up through Oolite, opens uh, April 22nd. Um, the Bakehouse is uh, doing, um, they are going to take their summer, their, um, their gallery, and they're going to just allow artists, two dimensional artists to work in there for free. I think from June through July, you have to go on the website to check. So if artists are in need of studio space, that's free studio space that's going to be coming available as soon as they open their doors. Um, I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like smack myself when I hang up because I've been like, you forgot this and you forgot <laughs> that. Um, there's also the big, the big one that was just released um, called Artist Relief um, oh, yeah. that Sarah, yeah, that Sarah Arison was part of. Um, of uh, the Arison Arts and the Mellon Foundation and um, many other phenomenal foundations. Um, Warhol, you know, just did, um, they opened up what was their um, re-granting to give that money just to artists and they increased that pool of money that artists could use just for their, um, just for their expenses. And, and here like locally, we're lucky that we have Locust Projects. That is one of those re-granting. Um, uh, uh, nonprofits, and that opens up soon. Um, you know, and I love that organizations like the museums and things are continuing to highlight local artists. Like Pam has their, Pam has their local art views done by local artists and things like that. So you know, and the ICA has their programs, and and I I, I just want I want to mention everybody because I think that. Uh, you know, MOCA doing their programs with teens. Like there's so many organizations doing so many great things all in their own, all in their own ways. And it through their own, the things that they're strong with. Like the reason why we chose to do the virtual studio visits and things like that is because, you know, I, I'm just about, I want, I just want, I want to put people together. Like, I feel like I was put on this earth to connect people, right? Because totally. that's why I'm alive. I love people. You know, so that's why we're doing that, you know, um, but that's a great thing. Like everybody has different skills and resources and we're all taking advantage of them now. Totally. And I love that you'd said that because I think a lot of times, especially in the arts ecosystem, we worry that if we connect and if we share and if we partner somehow we'll have less, but I totally believe that the more visible and the stronger we can become by knowing each other and doing that connecting you're talking about, the more everybody wins because we're just a greater part of the consciousness of Miami and people know where to go. Or if they don't know where to go, they know somebody who knows, right? Right. And so. also, but also outside of the arts, you know, I mean, you know, like, it, it, but definitely like, you know, pulling in other art forms like the New World Symphony and Guitars Over Guns and, you know, um, and, and Miami Light Project, like you want to, also, um, you know, pool juggernaut theater that did Miami motel stories. Like you want to support other art forms too. And also yeah. the other visual arts, Absolutely. but also organizations like radical partners and immigrant power that are, you know, totally different organizations, but, but there's, there's always something that will bring you together. There's, there's always a connection. If you just talk for a minute, you'll, you'll find something. That's one of the things I love about Miami and um, one of the, the ways that I met you, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the reason that we're having this conversation. So, um, and don't worry because I'm gonna ask you to send me all the links that you would like me to put on the show notes. Good. Uh, yeah. We're gonna put this on YouTube so that everyone has access to it without having to be on Facebook. And so this can continue to be a resource for people who might not even be knowing about Miami art, but who can um, then have a way to dive in. Yeah. Thank and you, Catherine. I, what okay. an amazing conversation. Yes, one more thing. And I just well, I just want to thank, like, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here today and doing Fountainhead. You know, we turned Fountainhead into a nonprofit only like, you know, in 2000, we got our nonprofit status in 2018. And I wouldn't be able to do everything that I'm doing without the generous support of people like George Perez. You know, I, I talked earlier about the Knight Foundation, like Miami's arts organization would not exist without the the Knight oh, Foundation, okay. right? Totally. With Miami Dade yeah. County, and and I've been I've been very lucky that I have many generous donors that that are on our website and an incredible board, and I really wouldn't be able to do anything without them. And most importantly, I wouldn't be able to do anything without artists. 
So to all the artists out there, thank you. Yes, thank you to, to our to lives. Everybody, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll let you go now. <laughs> okay, thank you, Catherine. What, a, what an amazing conversation. I really could talk to you all afternoon. Um, so if you have any questions for Catherine or me, um, you can send me a message, you can post a comment. Um, we'll be posting the link to YouTube later. And um, otherwise, I just wanna thank Catherine for being so generous with her enthusiasm and her knowledge and her commitment to making a stronger Miami and, and making stronger artists. Yeah. Oh, and the Arts and Business Council. Oh yes, that, Arts and Business Council. That, help, that helps all of us, all oh, of us sure. nonprofits trying to do things, Arts and Business Council. <laughs> For I sure. I miss people. Okay. So many. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Catherine. Thank Take you. care. Bye. Bye.